I'm going to tell you to do something. Uh, you're going to hear me say this and think to yourself, I'm never going to do that. I'm then going to give you some reasons, five reasons that you should be doing it. And I'm pretty convinced that when I get to the last one, you'll think to yourself, I need to be doing this. Now, what is it? What should you be doing right now? Well, here it is. You should be meditating on classic Christian hymns. Now, I know what you think when you hear that word hymn. You think of organ music. Maybe you think of traditionalism. You think of churches that you might purposefully avoid on Sunday morning. But let me just encourage you that a hymn is not just organ music, that actually there is a spiritual exercise that you could be doing with Christian hymns that's truly transformational. And so let me give you some reasons. Why should you be doing this? Here's the first one. It will exercise mental muscles that currently are atrophying. We all know that we live in a world of distraction, but most of us only think of half of the problem. See, the problem's not just that we're distracted, it's meant that we're actually meant to be focusing our mind on something. We're meant to be paying attention to things that are worthy of our attention. This is why Paul tells us in Colossians 3 to set our minds on things above. Now, how do you do that? The way you do it is not just by turning off your phone, it's by actually putting something before you that's worthy of paying attention to. In a classic Christian hymn, what it will do is present aspects of who Christ is, what the gospel is, the most fundamental things that we need to be thinking about. And so it will be a script by which you can learn how to focus your mind on the things that are above. Now, here's a second reason you should be doing this, is that to meditate on a classic Christian hymn, it's like a spiritual hit workout. You know, hit workouts are these high intensity interval training workouts where Let's say, for example, in 12 minutes of sprinting, you can get more out of that 12 minutes than out of just 45 minutes of a leisurely jog. The idea is if we exert ourselves the right way, you don't have to spend as much time on exercise as you might otherwise. And there's something to be learned about that spiritually. It's very easy to, to wake up and just to sit on the couch and to have a, a cup of coffee and just to let our eyes kind of drift across pages of the Bible and to mumble a few words of prayer and to let that fill up 30 or 40 minutes and to think that was a great time with God when the truth is we maybe got really very little out of that activity. I'd encourage you, if you take 12, 13, 14 minutes and if you take something like a hymn, and guess what? They are difficult. Uh, if you let your mind think about the language, if you pay attention to the images that are being used, if you even look up words you don't know, if you think about the way they weave together uh, the scriptures, in that 12 minutes, you can get more out of 12 minutes of an engaged mind thinking about truth, uh, some of the most profound truths that God has revealed to us, than if you just sit on your couch for 45 minutes uh, letting your mind drift. Here's a third reason you should be doing this is that it's going to help break that dopamine addiction. As Christians, we feel good about ourselves if we read books. Uh, if our eyes scan pages and then we can turn the page, we love the feel of the turn in the page. We love the feel of closing the book and being able to put it on the shelf and to think we've accomplished something. But the truth is, very often, if anyone was to come up to you and ask you when you finish a book what you learned, a lot of us, our mind would go blank. The thing about hymns is they condense truth. And so I would encourage you to think of the fact that you can get as much out of a few stanzas of, let's say, two hymns on the cross, you can get as much out of those two hymns as you might get out of reading a whole book on the cross, because they're going to take all of those fundamental truths, they're going to condense it, and they're going to apply it, and if you will just let your mind pause and think about these stanzas, you will get more for that time than you can possibly imagine. Here's a fourth reason you should be doing this, is that uh, meditating on hymns, they will help you recover a sense of wonder. We've all had the experience, you know, when you become a Christian, everything is wondrous, everything is amazing. Uh, you've never thought about grace and the gospel and who Jesus is and the resurrection. And all of these things are just astounding and marvelous to us. But over time, we get familiar with them. So how do you break that familiarity? Let me encourage you to go and to meditate on classic hymns. Truth is a little bit like a mountain, and uh, we can get in that position where we only look at the mountain face from one direction, when the truth is if you change your position, you can see it from a different point of view. And what hymns do is each hymn, so say if there's a hundred different hymns on the cross, each one will take you and show you that same truth, but from a particular angle. 
And so from that fresh angle, you'll see things that will inspire wonder about familiar truths, but you'll see them in unfamiliar ways. Here's a fifth reason you should be doing this, is that you will find words to express the depth of your soul. Prayer's hard. It's hard when you sometimes have emotion to uh, know how to vocalize and communicate it before God. It's hard to know what to do when you've got words, but you've got no emotion. And let me just encourage you that often if you take a hymn and use it like a script, it will do two things. In some cases, you'll have that emotion already, but you won't know how to express it. But in the hymn, you'll be given words that you can use to just communicate your heart before God. But there'll be other times that you'll have these words in the hymn, but you won't have the emotion. But if you take time to reflect on those words, what will happen is all of a sudden it's going to stir up some of that emotion. And so what you'll find yourself is that hymn, it will become a script of devotion. And all of a sudden something's going to kindle and you'll have emotion that will go with the words and it will lead you into a rich time of communion with God. And so let me just encourage you, if uh, you feel like you need something fresh, in your devotional life, if you feel like your time with God has gotten a little bit stale, if you find yourself just turning pages but not really getting much from the books that you're reading, try something different. Try taking a classic Christian hymn, really engaging it with all of your mental faculties, and seeing if God doesn't use that to fill your mind with truth, but also to ignite your heart so that you can have communion and rich times of prayer with Him.